Hey everyone, I'm Brent Barnett with Gibraltar Hardware, and today I'm going to be building a rack for Omar Tavares, who is the drummer for hip hop artist Pitbull. Omar called me up, and um, we were talking about racks for a little bit, and um, was telling me how he wanted a rack. I asked him three questions. I said, how much space, floor space do you have to work with? What function do you need it to serve? And what kind of look are you going for? Okay, so then he proceeded to give me his vision. He said, I needed to be able to fit on an 8x8 riser, and I needed to be able to be split in half very easily to be carried on and off stage. So I was like, okay, you don't want a crossbar then over the bass drum. He's like, no, 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 no crossbar. I was like, okay. He goes, but I really loved the two tiers that I've seen on other racks, and, um, but I want it to be low profile. I don't want it to be, the tiers to be really high like I've seen on a lot of like metal guys racks, um, but I really do like the two tiered look. And also, I want the, um, the cymbals and snares and electronics that I have to all be coming out of vertical bars. I was like, okay, we can do that. So check it out, this is what we did. Okay, so the first thing I did was establish the leg. I added the SCGRSCTLA, which is the chrome large T-leg assembly. And I used a 24 inch curved, arm, curved bar, which is the SCGPR24C. And the reason I did this was Omar wanted to, you know, he wanted a couple different side racks because it would be easier to set up and tear down and to move off stage. But he wanted to look a little different and he didn't want necessarily straight bars. So I decided, hey, why don't we try moving the curved bars in towards the middle. The bass drum's right there and the rack toms are going to shoot out of the two curved bars. Okay, so now I've added the side crossbars on. Omar... Uh, liked what I did with Dusty Saxon's rack. He liked the fact that there was two tiers, but he didn't want two different T legs. So what I did was I took two clamps for the outside clamp. I used just a regular chrome right angle clamp. And um, for the inside tier, I used an actual adjustable right angle clamp, the SCGCSAR. Um, and I used that to actually get a little bit more distance from this particular tier. Now, but the most important thing is that you make sure that all of your vertical legs are perfectly straight up and down, that they're not leaning left or right because that's what's ultimately going to affect your stability. If you notice I did the exact same thing, I just duplicated the exact same thing on the floor tom side. Okay so the next step is I added the no leg snare stand to the rack. And what I did was I used the, uh, the bent bar that we offer that comes with the stealth rack. And um, Omar is actually gonna be using a double pedal so I have it positioned to where the bend goes beneath the connector arm. The reason I attached it right here was because there was no other vertical pole or something that I could connect it to and I don't want to uh, connect the, the snare stand over here and I didn't want this to be so far over connected under this vertical pole that it was going to conflict with the pedal or it was going to conflict with the hi-hat stand. So what I did was I just took a um, adjustable chrome right angle clamp, the SCGCSAR and I just added it to the foot right there and it's perfect because it's very low profile just like Omar wanted it and um, it still gets the job done. Anyways, I used the GSMTL, the mini T-leg, and um, just connected it to the bent bar with a chrome right angle clamp. And then I just have the GUASB, the SEGUASB, Gibraltar Ultra Dust Snare Basket. Okay, so this is the rack configured with all the vertical arms. Right here, he's gonna have splashes out of each one of these booming in this direction. I use 24 inch curved arms for that. And for these two or two crashes that he's gonna have, I put 36 inch curve bars off this and I just connected all these to the rack by using just regular right angle clamps. Now this long guy right here is a 46 and um, we are gonna be using that to put his overhead mics out of. The same thing on the other side. Now if you go to the inside, this is where he's got another auxiliary snare. He's got a 14 inch snare right here 
and then right up here he's got another 12 inch uh, sna snare. At the top he's going to have an SBDS coming out of it right here so it kind of makes a little bit of a triangle so he can be sitting on the left side and just be playing over here like this. Now the right, the, the floor tom side I had to, it looks a little different because there's not as much stuff over here but I still used 24 inch curved tube for this. This is where the ride's going to come out of and shoot over over his, um, just over his 12. You know, this is, uh, this is actually a 36 for a crash and uh, these two 24s are just for you know some smaller crashes and um, as I mentioned earlier this bad boy right here is for the overhead now let's look at all the different fittings that I used for each one of these if you see I have pretty much the same fitting on each on the end of each curve tube with the exception of this one I used this one this is the SC RBA and um, I use this one because this is a little bit more lighter weight than the, than the SC RMAA, which is a little more heavy duty. It has a nylon bushing that comes with three different sizes that you can remove and add depending upon the size down tube you have. There's an inch, three quarter inch, and um, seven, eight inches. With this, it just adjusts. Um, I think, I don't believe you can put anything larger in there than an um, inch and a quarter. But uh, lighter weight, more heavy duty. This is great for mounting. This is great for mounting toms, and these are great for mounting cymbals. And I put one on this side, and I put one on this side, because the toms are going to shoot out over the bass drum like this. Okay, so now this was the final step to finishing Omar's rack. We have everything cut down to the right size. Everything's completely customized to um, exactly how Omar likes using it. What we had to do was we had to ditch the 36 inch curb bars on this side. As you saw, I had 36 and I had 24 inch, but completely ditched the 36s because we didn't need that much length. It was just a waste of tube. So we just used all 24 inch curb bars for each of these verticals, except for this bad boy right here. And this was the, um, this is a 46 inch curve that we're using for his mic overheads. And we have the exact same one on the other side. So each length is custom fit to exactly how high he wants each symbol to be. And I have the SC RBA attached to the top of the tube to allow, to allow you to be able to mount a boom arm down inside the tube. And I just connected it to the rack using a right angle clamp. So what we have here is we decided to add this because he has a new china that he wanted to put up there, a 20 to 22 inch china. And um, didn't have another place to throw it. So what I did was, if you look over on this side, these are both 46 inch curve tubes that span the whole crossbar section. There's a little bit excess still hanging out on this side. What we did was we kept it. And I used that excess to mount this tube that's going to be supporting is China. So sometimes even though it's not always clean and perfect looking, you can always find use for that extra little bit of tube that's hanging out. For instance, let's have a look at the legless snare stand. Right here his bass drum's coming to here, so this extra tube is hanging off the front of the the front of the uh, the bass drum area. Well, what we're going to do with that is we're going to add a um, a miking system. We're going to clamp a tube with a clamp this direction and the mic is going to come out and go right into the bass drum. So there is still good reason to leave a little bit of excess tube on everything. Kind of alternated which tubes were coming out of the inside tier versus the outside tier. Do the same thing on the floor tom side. Just gives it a little bit more space and a little bit more depth. Now what was really interesting that we had to do for his splash going right above his 10 inch tom over here, there wasn't enough space on the rack to do it. There wasn't enough space on the lower tier as either to do it and to get the position that he wanted it because he wants it right over the 10 inch tom. So what I had to do was I added a uh, SCGCS AR clamp 
which is the adjustable right angle clamp, the one that has the little drum key on the inside that you can turn and you can flip this 360 degrees no matter which angle you want. So just added this, <clears throat> just cut a piece of tube that I had laying around and just added this to the outside of the front leg that's actually holding the tom. And so it kind of blends in exactly with the frame so you can't even really, you don't even really know it's there, especially, you know, being out in the audience, you're not even going to know that it's there. And that's the kind of the effect we look because we wanted because this whole space is going to be open right here for the, the toms are just going to look like they're floating 